hello you guys what is up welcome back how's everybody doing i hope you guys are all doing well today is pick a card you guys it's going to be pick a card on what does your next lover look like the next person who's coming into your life the next person who's around the corner this could be a boyfriend a girlfriend a husband i don't know who this is i will let you guys know during the reading what vibe i'm picking up on the significance of this person but for the most part we're just going to focus on what they look like the significance is going to vary depending person to person okay so with all that, you guys, here is a divination tool with intuitive practice. Keep what resonates. Keep what resonates. Let go of what does not. There's nuance to every conversation. Here is a clip of the piles right now. All right, you guys, these are the three piles. We got group one with the fluorite, group two with the black tourmaline, and group number three with the rose quartz. Mm. You guys, in a moment to meditate on which pile is calling your name. You guys are free to right now. And if you want to pick more than one pile, you guys are always welcome to do show. All right, you guys have now picked your pile. Please go and check out my description box. I'll give you guys timestamps for when your reading will stop. With that, let's go and jump into your pick a card. Hello, group number one. Welcome to your guys' reading. We're going to start off with the dice, you guys. Aries and Libra, sun, moon, rising. This could be you. This could also be your person that's coming through. Pisces and Taurus. Hello, Pisces. Hello, Taurus. Again, sun, moon, rising. Just Aquarius. Sun, moon, rising, Aquarius. Okay. Let's jump straight on into it, you guys. I am using my skeleton deck today. Um, this is one of my favorite decks to use, especially for what do they look like readings. What does group number one's person, the next person that's coming in, what do they look like? Okay. Brown eyes for some reason. When I'm flipping these out, it's like brown, brown eyes. Don't know why. Okay. That makes sense. We have the queen of rings. Um, I don't know why it was like, I, I don't know why it was like brown eyes and not brown hair or brown eyes and not like melanin blessed skin, but the brown eyes was standing out to me. The reason why I'm saying this makes sense with the queen of pentacles is because obviously a pentacle is round kind of like an eyeball right also she's the queen of pentacles which is connected to earth energy taurus capricorn virgo the earth is right the dirt ground soil it reminds me of brown okay so um it's not surprising to me that that popped into my mind's eye when i was shuffling brown eyes is significant now also what may be significant with this person is a very naturally um how do i say this somebody who is relaxed in who it is that they are so the way that they present i would say is very perhaps very different than the way that I present. Um, somebody who, you know, maybe they wear their natural nails. Maybe they're somebody who doesn't wear extensions. Maybe they're somebody who doesn't wear a face of makeup. Someone who, if this is a male, somebody who has a beard or who's not like clean shaven, somebody who is a little bit more on the, again, like natural side of things, okay? So there is that. This could also be referencing somebody who chooses to dress really nicely or like they invest in the products that they use or they invest in the um the materials that they put on their body and i'm stating it that way you guys because it doesn't have to be clothes it could be like they have a they wear really nice cologne or the body wash or the face wash they use or maybe they moisturize with a luxurious cream um, but there's something about what they're doing to their physical body that feels like they're investing in it financially and it feels like a product okay so brown eyes i'm getting with that again a more natural aesthetic or a more natural presenting physical self and then investing in your products okay investing again in like your skincare or investing in like good quality clothing something that's like not fast fashion no shade to people who buy fast fashion that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying this is the energy that i'm getting from this someone who i feel like i'm also getting a very um how do i say that okay so queen of pentacles doesn't necessarily give me capricorn energy but for some reason capricorn energy feels prevalent here with their physical appearance and when i think of a capricorn um I think of somebody who is dressing again very, very nicely, but someone who's not necessarily going over the top with their, like they're not somebody again, who's wearing like a full beat. They're not somebody who is going above and beyond to look, that's the word. They're not looking gaudy, okay? I'm not, I'm getting the opposite of gaudy. If you don't know what gaudy means, essentially it's just dramatic it's camp it's over the top it's a little tacky i love gaudy things and i love gaudy people but people would describe it as a little tacky this person feels more classic 
that is how I want to describe this. Okay, moving forward. And again, you guys, the brown eyes are sticking out to me. Moving forward, we have the Seven of Wands. All right, you guys. And the Seven of Wands is essentially talking about jealousy, okay? Now, when I see jealousy show up and we're talking about what somebody looks like, obviously, I would say this person is somebody who is, they have something physically that other people would look at and be jealous, okay? If it's a man, if it's a woman, it's gonna be different, right? Like women are jealous of other women for different reasons than why men are jealous of other men. Um, for women, this could be like someone who has a really beautiful body or somebody who has really nice, long, natural, <laughs> naturally long, healthy hair. Somebody who has um, perhaps just a gorgeous like facial structure, right? Jealousy comes in all shapes and forms, and especially when we are distinguishing between men and women, I think it's different. This isn't necessarily pinpointing what they look like, but it's telling me that there's something physical about the person that's coming into your life that other people look at and they go, ooh, I wish I had that. We have the Four of Swords as well. So this is like the opposite of like Pete Davidson. This is somebody who looks well rested. This is somebody who looks like they like sleeping beauty. Like it's giving very much like I look refreshed. I look a someone who's not frazzled. Somebody who perhaps um, takes time to like nourish themselves, take care of themselves. So that is coming through with their physical appearance. Like it's a, like I'm getting eight hours of sleep type of energy, even if they're not. We have the page of wands, okay? So there's something about this person's physical appearance that is invoking excitement and invoking a feeling of like, oh, I've never felt this way before, okay? All right. I'm going to get a few more tarot cards, you guys, and then I want to just jump straight on into the... What is this? The oracles. <laughs> okay. Six of Wands, the Six of Wands, a victory. Okay, so you guys, I've been essentially describing this the whole time. Like I think of this person as somebody who is physically attractive. I think that when you look at this person, most people would be like, oh, they won the genetic lottery or they won, you know, I don't know. This gives me very like homecoming king or homecoming queen, like somebody who's just naturally pretty, someone who's probably already, already, always been physically attractive for the most part maybe they went through an awkward phase but if they did i feel like it was short-lived um the six of wands is a win it's a victory so when you meet this person and this is important you guys because we're talking about the person who's coming into your life this is how you're perceiving them you are looking at them as like oh okay like you are attracted. like i'm seeing this as like i am so lucky to be engaging in a relationship or in a a finagling with this person okay give me one second there's also a lot of wand energy here you guys so that is like length okay when i think of a wand i think of length that could be coming through the form of like somebody who's tall somebody who has really long legs somebody who has a really long torso someone who may have long arms long phalanges this could also though obviously be talking about somebody who has length in other places okay we will keep this keep that there um all right someone who's very passionate I think that's playing a role in their physical attractiveness because like you can tell how passionate they are. They're not like a, a stick in the mud. They're not a dull, they're not dull dish water. Can I? We have water. Okay. Love this. Okay. So for all my water signs and earth signs here, this person that's coming into your life is going to be somebody who you are compatible with. I feel like on a deep level, I feel like this person's going to make you feel very much like at home. For the fire and the air signs, I'm not saying that you cannot also have that experience, but I'm not seeing that show up so far. So we have the water elements of sensing, okay? This is telling me, you guys, that a part of their physical attractiveness is their heart and is the way that they are able to express their emotions, okay? I also feel like I am getting a sense of, um, it feels like a, a very layered person because again, we do have the earth and the water. So it's giving me like hard on the outside and very soft and watery on the inside. This could present as somebody who has a lot of earth in their chart and maybe like a water moon or like a water Venus. Um, and when this pulls through physically, 
okay? When this pulls through physically, when I see water, this isn't giving me anything physical. Water is emotional. Water is internal. So you are attracted to this person. And this is important again for the water signs and the earth signs. You are attracted to this person, not just because of their physical appearance, but because of like what's going on beneath the surface. That is what is extremely, extremely attractive to you about this person, okay? Um, now, yes, on the outside, they may also be physically attractive, but I don't want you guys to take that and think like you're about to be dating Jacob Alordi. You know, he's in a happy, healthy relationship, so I wouldn't think you would anyways. Is he in a happy, healthy relationship? I don't know. I shouldn't make that statement. I don't know if he is. He's in a relationship. Point is, the earth element is here, and this is giving me the sense of like, again, being physically attracted to somebody, especially if you are attracted to men, um, It because this is giving me very like masculine physical type of energy. I feel like there is a physical attraction, but that is not like what is pulling you towards this person. It is like what's going on with them internally. So, and again, the brown eyes is really just standing out to me with this. Also, they may have really like squared off earthy rough hands. Also, when I see this, I'm getting like hairy. Um, and I know if you're attracted to women, you may just be like, oh, but like women are hairy too, guys. So like if you, you know, like that humans are hairy, humans are hairy and women are hairy too. But I'm getting like hairy, like this person feels very, like they've got a lot of natural body hair. Um, I really am just seeing like a beard and then like hair on the chest, you guys. Um, they may even have like just a, it just feels very hairy and I'm not trying to like be graphic or gross guys, but I'm just getting like a lot of hair. We have Chiron, which is healing. This is beautiful. This is telling me perhaps this person prioritizes their health again, which makes sense going back to the four of swords. When we're talking about what somebody looks like physically, somebody who prioritizes this, their health. Now, I also do have to talk about the fact that Chiron is the wounded healer. So there may be a significant wound on this person's physical body, because again, we are focusing on a physical body, a physical structure right now. This could be representing the fact that this person has like a physical... Um, I don't want to call it like an issue because it's not an issue. It could be a scar. It could be maybe this person um, has some type of like disability. Maybe they've been in an accident and they have like really bad back problems. Maybe this person um, used to play sports and they have a really bad knee, something to that effect. It could be more severe depending on obviously the individual, but I am seeing like a, a, a health issue that I feel like was more severe at one point than it is right now. And it's at a place where it's a lot better and it may not play a major role in their day to day. For some of you, again, it's going to show physically though. It's going to show in the form of a scar. It's going to show in the form of like a limp. It's gonna show in the form of like, oh, my neck hurts. Oh, my back hurts. Like that type of behavior or, or them actually physically saying that. And for others of you, this is an internal wound. This is an internal wound though, that again, was gonna play a role in your physical attraction. And that's not trauma bonding, that's relating. For those of you who also have an internal wound, specifically like in early development, you will relate to this person on that, on that wound. And again, not to say that we're romanticizing wounds or trauma, but it's natural for humans to be attracted to other humans who they have similarities with, okay? We do funny I'm saying that we do have the fourth house of roots so I think that there is something that is rather familiar about this person physically <sighs> not to bring up Freud but it's almost giving me that type of energy where it's like this person may have certain things about themselves physically that not not that they literally look like a family member or they literally look like your dad or your uncle or your brother I'm not saying that they literally look like that person but they may have features or attributes that are similar to yourself or similar to, again, the people that you've been around. Um, it, it could even be like to yourself, like this person, again, there's something about them that is very like, 
you see a part of yourself in them. I do feel like the base of who you are and who this person is, is very similar. The base, okay? Now your experiences throughout life have been different, but the base is the same. The starting, not the starting point, the material that you both were working with in regards to who you are and who they are was the same. And I feel like you are recognizing that in them and that is playing again a role in that emotional connection, which I think is driving a lot of the momentum forward in you pursuing this person or in this person pursuing you. Okay. Nobody come at me for the Freud comment, okay? I'm just saying like that's the vibe that's kind of coming through, um, which I feel like people do, right? Like I feel like it's very natural to be attracted to, again, people who are very similar to yourself. Not to say that you can't be attracted to an opposite, but I just feel like for this group specifically, this person is giving me very much almost like mirroring vibes. Can I get, okay, that was like, <laughs> okay, interesting. This person's intelligent. That's nice to know. We have Jupiter here. This is grow and expand. Again, that could be referencing the wand energy that I was picking up earlier, picking up on earlier. Um, the wand energy could be, again, like length in regards to height, your arms, your limbs, your torso, your this, your that, um, maybe even your hair, like having really long hair. Could also, again, though, you guys be referencing other things so you can keep that in mind when i see jupiter i do also register this as um very lucky energy okay very lucky energy so again i do think that there is a layer of luck in regards to what this person looks like physically for example if it's a man someone who's over six foot like if you're a man and you're over six foot like you're already like you know i don't want to say you're winning because that's not necessarily the case but like you already have an advantage over a large majority of the population of men. Um, if you're a woman and you have a naturally very symmetrical face and really beautiful hair and a nice body, like you're naturally already, you know what I'm saying, you guys? There's a level or an element of luck that is coming in with this person, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. We have cancer here. This is nurture, comfort, and protection. Okay, so again, you guys, like I do think that this person, very similar to how I was describing it earlier with the with the um, the earth and the water energy, not that cancer has anything earthy to do with it, but I do feel like, right, cancer, the crab, hard on the outside, soft on the inside. That's the energy that comes up with this person, you guys. Hard on the outside, soft on the inside. You are attracted to that soft inside of this person, but physically, I do think that them presenting themselves in a more hard way or in a more almost like una unattainable way feels... I don't want to say intimidating, but that's like kind of the vibe. Okay. We do have somebody who's also a little bit weird. Um, like their personality, when you get to know them, I feel like you're like, you're so weird. Like you are strange. Um, this is originality, um, progressive imaging and philanthropy. All right. Whenever I see Aquarian energy, I just think of somebody who's very, um, Somebody who feels misunderstood, somebody who feels like an outcast, not necessarily somebody who is an outcast or somebody who is misunderstood, but I know that Aquarius, like a lot of Aquariuses I've met have expressed the feeling of not being understood, even when like they are being understood, if that's making sense. Um, I just see that essentially as somebody who, again, is very much in their own lane or has a unique perspective on the world, a unique perspective on life. Also intelligence, right? Um, and then we have the air element as well. This is open-mindedness, objectivity, and learning, all right? So this person's mind is also something that's going to be very attractive for you guys, group number one. I am moving past that just because I, again, want to focus physically. And I feel like when I think about the air signs, I do strictly um, think about somebody who is intelligent, somebody who has the gift of gab, somebody who is really good at conversing, which is all great things, similar to the water signs. Like I just see that as an emotional aspect. Anyways, can I get Gemini, ninth house? Okay, so this person's, the way this person talks, their voice may be something that you are attracted to. You guys remember attraction, physical attraction is beyond just your body, right? Like you can be, again, Jacob Elordi, but if your voice is not sounding like Jacob Elordi, I'm not saying I'm not going to be attracted to you, but like, it's, you know, anyways. 
This is words, thoughts, analysis, information, learning, trade, ideas, smarts, reporting, awareness, vision, lens, palette, perception, curiosity, narrative, muse, and wonder. All right. We also have a Gemini here. And again, you guys, I know everyone says Gemini is the twins. Um, personally, for me, every Gemini I've met, they're not necessarily the twins. They are a mirror. And I think that over time, as a Gemini ages, as a Gemini goes through certain phases, especially male Geminis, not so much female Geminis. I feel like female Geminis are like a different breed in a good way. Um, but male Geminis, especially, I feel like as they go throughout life, they become a collection of the people that they have encountered, of the experiences that they have encountered, and they, they mirror those experiences. And I feel like that's why oftentimes people have a lot of negative things to say about Gemini's. Um, but this is curious, communicative, versatile, flexible, variety seeking, social, collaborative, brilliant, perspective, connected, vocal, adaptive, street smart, mobile, studious, superficial, restless, and fidgety. So again, the mirroring effect, when I was talking about this person being somebody who may look very similar to yourself or people who are in your day-to-day -day life, that is what I mean by that, okay? the mirroring effect we also have the ninth house um the ninth house is foreign travel adventure higher education customs faith belief pilgrimage spiritual quest aspirations journalism religion gurus and risk taking okay so again you guys this person could come from a different location than yourself maybe you guys grew up on different parts of the country maybe you guys grew up in different countries different regions different cities that does not take away from the fact that i do think that this person has very similar physical attributes to yourself or to certain family members that you may have okay and again this person really I think their education their intelligence is really like whoosh, shining through okay what do they look like for group okay <laughs> Look at that. Okay, we'll talk about this first. We have the graveyard. This is unnecessary fear. Okay, so what I was saying earlier about the crab, the pinchers, and then I was also talking about them having a hard layer on the outside, a soft layer on the inside, the earth and the water, right? Them having a very like stern or stoic, a very Capricornic physical appearance, but on the inside, they're like deep and emotional and their waters are like, you know, unnecessary fear you may be or feel intimidated by this person upon meeting them now i don't see that as a bad thing unless that feeling persists throughout the relationship and then that's not a good thing guys you shouldn't remain intimidated by somebody who you're romantically involved with or who you're involved with in any aspect like you shouldn't remain intimidated by them um so seeing this this feels like you have an unnecessary fear this is saying like when you meet them you're going to be a little bit spooked you're going to be a little bit fearful a little intimidated but it's unnecessary because again this person has a really good heart and i feel like you guys are gonna be able to connect on a really again foundational level we have a black cat which we love um this is when fortune meets opportunity this person is aware of their physical attractiveness okay when fortune meets opportunity this person is fortunate this person was blessed physically right this person was blessed with their physical appearance and they have used that to create opportunity for themselves everybody on planet earth you guys does this okay and i know it sounds icky and i know it sounds gross but every single person on planet earth does this if you are given a gift you would be foolish to not use that gift to your advantage and i know that sounds gross and i know that sounds icky and nobody likes hearing that but it's just the truth right if you were born freaking Bella Hadid and you didn't go become a freaking supermodel, you did not live up to your fullest potential. Like you, what are you doing, right? If you are, who's a genius? Who's a genius who's not controversial? <laughs> uh, Stephen Hawking's, which like, I got beef with Stephen Hawking's, but like whatever. Um, if you are Stephen Hawking's and you didn't use, right? If you didn't use your mind um, to become freaking Stephen Hawking's, then you do not live up to your fullest potential. So that is how I'm seeing this, you guys. When fortune meets opportunity, this person has been blessed physically and they have had the opportunity to utilize that. I also think this person has been blessed in regards to their intelligence. And I think that they have been blessed with opportunities to utilize that. So, all right, one final little card and then we will pitter patter oh okay well look they're just hot all right we have leo <laughs> and we have the sun um for a lot of you this person may have really thick beautiful hair um the sun when we're talking about physical appearance like you're just attractive right for the sun to come up for leo to come up their physical appearance 
brings about, again, attention, which I think makes sense with the black cat here as well. Um, even the graveyard. Let's go ahead. Oops. Okay, we have Berlin. Hello to everybody in Berlin. Can I please get a little message about what this person looks like for group number one? Well, well, well. Fancy seeing you here, tall. Tall in height. It's almost as if that's what I was seeing in the cards. Hmm. How interesting. Ooh, okay. Put a boop, put a boop. Tall in height, okay. Tall in height, Berlin, hello. We have B. That could be first name, last name. We have 511. Now this is kind of short. This is kind of short. This is kind of short, but I would say they may be no shorter than 511, which like 511 is like practically six foot, but like still. We have Risky. We have Small Eyes. We have Wavy. They could have a wavy texture to their hair. I'm not necessarily seeing a hair color, you guys. Like it's ranging from black to literally like golden. Um, we have Love You More. We have F. We have Bedroom Eyes. We have Mutual. This is what I was talking about, you guys. Like, I feel like there is some type of, like, looking at this person, it's not to say they look related to you, but there's something about, like, you guys have physical features that are similar. Um, or if you, it's not necessarily, like, you could be coming from different cultures, but, like, still looking at you guys together, it's very cohesive. It's not, like... Your features don't clash with each other, which you know what? That may also be saying that you guys could have really beautiful children together. We have beautiful, we have bright eyes. We have teacher. And we have far away. And then the number three, so um march may be significant the third may be significant maybe 2003 for those of you who are younger could have been the year that they were born okay that i think maybe you guys are seeing a lot of threes anyways that is what i've got for you guys group number one thank you guys so much if you're looking for a personal reading description box hope this was helpful i'm sending you guys love that's all i got so Hello, group number two, welcome. Let's go ahead and roll. If you guys are looking for a personal reading, description boxes where those live, like I said in the beginning, the prices range from $30 to $75, depending on how much time you want. Um, all right, let's go ahead and roll. I have that Nicki Minaj song stuck in my head, I'm sorry guys. We have Leo and we have Aries. Leo and Aries, hello my beautiful babies. This is Sun, Moon, Rising, you guys. This could be your sign, but I feel like because we're talking about this person who is walking into your life in this upcoming season, I feel like this could also be their sign, Sun, Moon, Rising. Specifically Rising, guys. Taurus and Leo, hello Taurus. Oh, Capricorn, you're trying to sneak in. Capricorn, I mean, Leo, Taurus, hello. Aries and Sag, okay, the fire signs unite. Thundercats, let's go. Love that the most for you guys. Group number two. Okay, let's go ahead and start shuffling. Um, can I? What do they look like? There's something about them that's cool toned. And I know that's like such a weird thing to say. Like, what do you mean, Zena, they're cool toned? But I feel like this person is like a winter palette. If you don't know what that means, please do go ahead and look it up. Yeah. One more. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, here's the thing. I'm trying to like formulate the picture. It's processing, it's loading. The computer's a little slow right now. Give me a second. Okay, so definitely I'm picking up on like, again, a winter palette. And I know that's such an odd thing to say, but that's just 
what I'm feeling. Um, I'm not going to read this in order because I don't think it's necessarily relevant because we're not talking about a story or events. We're talking about somebody's physical appearance. We have the chariot. All right. This is Cancerian energy. So hello to all my fellow Cancers out there. Love you guys. Um, now, what is the chariot? The chariot is massive. All right. The chariot is strong. The chariot's resilient. The chariot's tough as hell. Okay. So when I see this and we're talking about somebody's physical appearance, obviously, um, and I just want to state this, the majority of the people who watch me are straight women. Um, we have some, you know, boys who watch who are part of the LGBTQ. I know we also have some straight men here. We also have women who are part of the LGBTQ. I understand that. But the majority um, are looking for men um, who picked this pile. So I'm going to read this for men and women, but I feel like for the majority of you, this is somebody who's going to be a bigger person. Now that's going to vary for all of you. Um, this could range from somebody who has like a dad bod, which is like my personal favorite, somebody who is very like muscular, somebody who's extremely tall, somebody with broad shoulders. It's giving Travis Kelsey. Okay. Like that's the energy of the chariot. It's giving, um, a bulldozer. It's giving, I am hella big. Okay. And again, personally, that I love. Um, now, if this is a woman that we are talking about, there is a level of intimidation that she is bringing to you. Like you are feeling intimidated by this woman. It's not necessarily due to her size, but I feel like it's due to her power or due to the effect that she may have on others. I don't know if this is like she has a resting, an RBF. Okay, I don't know if she has an RBF or if she's in a position of power or if she makes a lot of money or if she's just very social, but there's something about her that would be that I would register as intimidating. That is also backed up, you guys. Both of these claims are backed up by the fact that the last card that came out is the Queen of Wands. Now, again, if we're talking about a man, the Queen of Wands is somebody who is extremely attractive. Like that's how she is spoken about. That is her definition, okay? Like I'm hot, I'm a freaking, ooh, okay? Megan Fox energy has, I like to say. Massimo from 365, Jacob Alordi. Like that is the energy of the Queen of Wands. Like she exudes that like desirable, sensual, um, siren type energy. That is who she is, okay? Now, when we put that on a man, again, it's gonna come off a little bit differently, but it's still, like, the energy's still the same. It's just in a different font, essentially. So, again, going back to the intimidating woman, it could be because she gets a lot of attention. Like, she goes outside, men are hitting on her, women are hitting on her. Like, she's just getting a lot of attention because she's so attractive. Could also, though, be, again, the fact that she's comfortable in her skin and she just is who she is. She's not trying to be anybody else. That is incredibly seductive, okay? And incredibly intimidating, especially if you are somebody who is a man who's, like, um, or a woman who is easily intimidated. Like, it's easy to be intimidated by the Queen of Wands. Now, again, if this is a man, I would register this as somebody who, again, very, very much like the female version, somebody who gets a lot of attention, somebody who's very physically attractive. Now, for men, you can get attention with not like and not be beautiful. You can get attention and not be, you know, stunning. You could be wealthy. You could be intelligent. You could be, you know, um, men. And I'm not saying women also can't get in get attention through their intelligence, but I feel like stereotypically speaking, which again, we have to speak in general when we're doing general readings, you guys, stereotypically speaking, um, men have a wider range of like what makes a man attractive, right? So, and that I think is also mostly due to the fact that women are as, you know, shallow. Anyways, Moving forward, we have the Knight of Swords, all right? The Knight of Swords is somebody who's extremely fast paced, fast moving. Now, what this is telling me, you guys, is this person's intelligent, but they're also not a lazy bum, okay? This person is like getting up and getting their stuff done, okay? This isn't someone who's slow. This person could have a little bit of ADHD. This person could have a little bit of like attention deficit disorder, um, but extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent. Also, this person may have, it's giving me for some reason, like their mind feels like, like it feels very fast. 
Um, it's giving a little bit of chaos as well. I don't know if those of you who picked pile two, if you are at all attracted to chaos, but this person may have a bit of chaos surrounding their, their physical appearance or just their life in general may be a bit chaotic. I'm not saying that's necessarily due to anything that they are doing. This may not be their fault, you guys. Some people um, are just fated for a more chaotic life, right? But when I see this again, and essentially what it's telling me is this person is not a lazy bum. This person's getting up, they're getting their stuff done. They're very intelligent. And I also believe this person is somebody who has the ability to speak in a manner that's seductive. It's giving me Gemini and Lilith. It's giving me um, maybe even... <laughs> yep, nope, it's just giving me Gemini and Lilith. I was gonna say Libra and Lilith. That could also be a placement for this person. It's giving me that type of vibe. Like it's giving me air sign but like seductive. So like Libra, Gemini, I want to say Aquarius, but I feel like Aquarius is a seductive energy in a more androgynous way. That may also be playing a role in this person or with this person as well. Think when I say androgynous, think, um, I'm trying to think of somebody who's not Jeffree Star because I know that's like, um, no hate, but no love either. Um, who isn't up? David Bowie in freaking um, the Goblin King. Androgynous, love it, that type of vibe. We have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is essentially like luck, right? When we're talking about somebody's physical appearance, for the Wheel of Fortune to show up, this is saying like luck, which in reality, right, unless you buy it, this is the only way to obtain physical beauty. Like you can buy it or you can be born with it. And either way, like you're lucky to do either. <laughs> like if we're all being super honest, like if you can afford to buy your physical beauty, like you're lucky. Matt Rife, Kim Kardashian. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you were born like that, like you are also like super lucky that you are able to like just be born and, you know, be beautiful. So Wheel of Fortune, regardless of how this person obtained their physical beauty, they are lucky to have it. Oh, I feel like I'm saying things I shouldn't say in this reading. We have the Five of Wands. This is again telling me that there is a spicy energy to this person that is making them attractive, okay? This is also talking about competition. So for some of you, this person may be into sports. Again, I mentioned Travis Kelsey earlier. This person may be a little competitive. Um, this person could also be somebody who is just very fiery and passionate as well, which obviously plays a role in being attractive. Okay. Okay, I was trying to look at their eyes. I can't see their eyes. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Can I please have a message for group number two? That's so funny. I said they're like a little androgynous and that's not for all of you. I feel like that's like for um very few of you. Um, even like for some reason, I want to bring up Hal from Hal's Castle or like Harry Styles, but whatever. It's giving me androgynous in that way. But for Uranus to be here, genius. Again, this person's extremely intelligent. I do think that their mind works rather fast. I am getting a bit of an energy spike. So the ADHD thing may be real. Um, but for some reason, Uranus, this planet specifically gives me androgyny. It gives me somebody who is of the energy of being a little bit unique, a little bit different from the rest. Somebody who doesn't necessarily adhere to specific roles right somebody who is comfortable enough in who it is that they are as an individual where they're like oh i can't i can't wear pink because i'm a boy like they're not gonna freaking care they're gonna be like i like what i like and that's what i like so i'm just gonna wear it um this is the vibe that i'm getting from this person and that doesn't mean you guys because i want to make it super clear as well that doesn't mean again if this is a woman that doesn't mean that they're necessarily dressing like a man if they're a man that doesn't mean they're necessarily dressing like a woman but i feel like they are comfortable enough in their physical body where they just they are who they are and they're not they're not putting themselves in a tiny little box and saying like these like i'm a man so i can only wear a suit and tie like, right, like I feel like this is somebody who's like, oh, like I don't mind playing with like textures and patterns and colors and this and that. Like, you know, it's giving me that type of energy. It could even be somebody who like is heavily tattooed or somebody who's more alternative, you guys. Maybe I'm misreading the androgyny as like androgyny and maybe it's actually just somebody who's more alternative. 
But again, like the whole Howl's Castle thing is really coming in strong. It's interesting because again, I feel like there's a mix of people who picked this specific pile, which makes sense. It's the middle pile, but it's giving me somebody who's more into more of like a, again, like a Howl's Castle type person. And then like a Travis Kelsey, like somebody who's the life of the party, somebody who has very much like Aries in their first house, that type of energy is also coming through. So it seems very split to me. So I'm sorry if I'm describing like two different people. Okay. Um, the North Node, life's purpose. All right. Again, I think that this person's physical body says a lot about who they are. I'm not necessarily saying it's playing a role in their life's purpose, although it could be, for example, if there's somebody who is like a mother, right? Um, their physical body, like mothers obviously go through a lot of physical changes with their bodies. Maybe they have stretch marks on their belly. Maybe they have, um, ooh, I was gonna get really graphic. I'm sorry, I was gonna talk about the chest. Maybe they have certain physical features on their body that is representing a major part of their life purpose. Again, such as motherhood, such as um, the job that you have, such as, Okay, again, tattoos. Not to say that tattoos are necessarily a part of your life purpose, but oftentimes people who are heavily tattooed, like there's meanings, there's connections to that physical marking on your body. So life's purpose. I think this person also does feel very connected to their body and that's playing a really big role again in their security. They're not like questioning who they are. This person's very much aware of who they are and they're very, very comfortable with themselves physically. We have um, a part of fortune, this is increase, okay? So again, there is a level of luck that has come about for this person in regards to their physical appearance. This could, again, maybe this is somebody who was born with insane amount of like natural athleticism. Maybe this is somebody who is naturally extremely artistic or somebody who is naturally just like they are not afraid to stand out. They're not afraid to be seen. So then they they don't mind being heavily tattooed. They don't mind dressing a little bit more uniquely. They don't mind dyeing their hair a crazy color. They're somebody who's comfortable in themselves. And that is, you're fortunate if you feel comfortable in your body. Because I feel like most people, um, at least most people that I've met, <laughs> do not. Um, we have the third house of messages, all right? So whenever I see this, we're talking about the third house. This is communication. I think that there's something very attractive about this person's mouth. Now, I don't know what exactly that is. It could be that they have really nice, like thick, plump, juicy, like suckable lips. Um, or maybe they have a really deep voice or maybe they talk really seductive, maybe, oh, if it's a woman, maybe they talk like a pretty little thing. Is it pretty little things? Oh, pretty little things. Oh, pretty things. I don't know. She's on TikTok. She's also on Instagram. I love her. And her voice is just like, I would, I would, I would do things for that voice. Okay. I would, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I don't know what I would do, but I do things. Anyways, somebody who may have a very seductive voice, somebody who again, may have really beautiful lips or a really gorgeous smile. We have Sagittarius as well. This is, I see. This is again, luck. So there is a level of luck that has, again, come into this person's life in regards to their physical appearance. Speaking again, that could be financial luck that then they get to spend money on their physical appearance. That could also be like, you're just, you won the genetic lottery. Regardless though, when I see this as well, I do have to state that you two may share different backgrounds in regards to your culture. The reason I'm saying that is because Sagittarius is connected to the ninth house. The ninth house is about travel, um, foreign travel, okay? So when I see that, it does oftentimes register to me as two people who come from different backgrounds in regards to culture or countries, things like this. Now, obviously, if you're in the States, if you're in Canada, if you're in North America, and if you are in North America or the West in general, that may not be like too rare, right? Because I feel like we are pretty mixed and coagulated. Um, anyways, yes, okay. Can I have a message about what they look like? I want to know what person two looks like for group number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aries, okay. So again, I think that there's two groups of people here. I think this is for the group of people who is more like the Travis Kelsey, the like athleticism, the big, broad, life of the party. Everybody's like paying attention to this person. I think both people who are here 
attract attention, but they attract attention differently, okay? So again, like the person who is more like a type A personality, somebody who's athletic, somebody who's extremely outgoing and friendly, they have a big, beautiful smile. They're somebody who is stereotypically attractive. They were blessed perhaps naturally with physical beauty. That is who this person is. I also, again, think this person is somebody who is very much action oriented, somebody who is wanting to progress themselves in life we have the first house arrival this is just essentially like your first house right what you look like i'm seeing this as attention grabbing for both people who are here we also have pluto and this is rebirth all right and i think that this is more so for the people who are perhaps coming from a side that is more unique or more androgynous more um alternative as i was describing it it perhaps took a process for this person to get to a place where they felt comfortable being who it is that they are I think it's interesting that these two energies are coming up in this reading because they feel very polar opposite. But again, at the same time, both these people attract attention. They just attract the attention for different reasons. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can I get some more? That is way too many. I'm very, very sorry. Can I please get at least one more? Two is perfect. Okay. So we have the first house again. I'm not going to talk about this again because we just had this. This is individuality, um, self-image and approach to life. And then we also have the third house. This is early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind and communication. We have the sun. This is self-express and the embodied truth. The sun, self-express and the embodied truth, okay? So seeing this, again, going back to the person who is more of a type A personality, I do think that they attract a lot of attention through their warmth. We have the sixth house of routine. This is establishing a foundation health daily daily life and practical details, okay? So this could be going to the gym, brushing your teeth every day, maintaining good hygiene, getting your hair cut, um, cleaning your clothes, like, right? Daily things that contribute to our physical appearance. All right. Can I have a message about who this person is, what they look like? What do they look like? Okay. So, see, okay, okay. We have forgiveness, reducing burden, reducing burden, forgiveness. Um, the more androgynous person or the more alternative, the unique person that's showing up here, it may be that they were made fun of at one point in life or they were bullied at one point. This could be from like peers. It could also be from family members or siblings. We have the owl. This is why seeing wise action. So earlier when I was saying like, I'm trying to look at this person's eyes, like I just see like big round eyes. I just see big eyes. I'm not seeing a color. And I know these are yellow. I don't think this person has yellow eyes, but their eyes are very large and very expressive. I think this is going for both of you, both groups who picked this or both, both people who are showing up in this reading. I feel like their eyes are large and expressive. We also have ancestors. It says love, um, love and legacy of our DNA love and legacy of our dna so again to me there's like a cultural aspect to this person and their physical appearance i feel like that goes for everybody again like as an american personally like i don't feel i mean maybe i look american i don't freaking know i don't know what that looks like like what does that look like i don't know um i do feel however i am very connected to my roots and where i come from like where my lineage originates from so that may be also playing a role in how they're choosing to present physically. I feel like I need this deck. Can I please? Okay. Pioneer. I want one. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So we have the priest. This is facilitates spiritual commitment, serves as a channel of spiritual energy. I think this is more so talking about leadership. Okay, I don't think this is talking about spirituality. I think that this person who is showing up for you guys, group two, it has very much leadership qualities. We, especially because we do have the pioneer as well. This is passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. Again, I think this goes for both people who are showing up today. We have student, um, humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning. Somebody who's very intelligent, somebody who's open to learn. That may also be representing youth. 
we have a guide. This is um, represents the nature of the divine in life and in yourself. Guide. Again, I'm seeing this as like leadership qualities, this person possessing a leadership um, or leadership qualities in general. All right. This is the last deck. And then I'm going to pull from the bowl. Interesting. Okay. I definitely feel like there's more people here who are attracted to the athlete, to the person who is very broad and tall and giving off like a very masculine type A personality. Um, this girl right here is exactly like what I'm seeing. I'm for the most, again, there's most of you here who are attracted to men. So I'm seeing this in like a male version, okay? Like somebody who, and I can't see their eyes, which I think is interesting, but I do think this person has very large expressive eyes, but somebody who's heavily tattooed, somebody who um, has a more tough, rough look to them, okay? And then again, there is another group of people here who is more attracted to like the Howl's Castle and to like the Harry Styles, the androgynous look, right? And I feel like you guys are here as well, but there's less of you. So I'm not getting as much information on that person, but we, again, we'll see in the bowl. So Aries is here, the radical. It says active, self-starting, daring, fierce, assertive, fiery, exhilarating, innocent, on a mission, bossy, driving, sparky, courageous, selfish, macho, impulsive, argumentative, and competitive. We have Leo, and again, I think this is more so for the majority of you. This is expressive, creative, loving, playful, warm, overt, self-confident, flirtatious, glowing, bedazzled, extroverted, vital, guideless, egotistical, juicy, proud, trusting, and excessive. I think that this person, again, is very eye-catching, okay? There's something about them that is extremely eye-catching, and it's not in a, again, unique way. It's in a more like, oh my God, you are so tall, or oh my God, like your face is like, ugh like wow um where your body is like oh my freaking your eyes are striking like there's something about this person that's extraordinarily striking and then we have the north node again and this says soul school learning curve fulfillment purpose maturing experience um north star process development practice path beacon blossoming becoming integrity and journey second time the north node has shown up let's go ahead and pull from our bowl can I please get some messages for group number two about what this person looks like? Isn't that so funny? Okay. 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 That's funny okay we'll just start reading them you guys we have respect so this person somebody who is respectful we also have works with hands we have you will be unusually successful in business so this person may be somebody who is extremely successful in business we have straight this could be their hair texture also their orientation we have online. A lot of you may be meeting this person online. We have the age 28. Maybe even the 28th is significant to this person. Maybe they look 28. We have piercings. Again, I do believe that there is a more alternative or unique group that is also here. We have Sydney. Hello to everybody in Australia. We have a melanin deep. We have strong build interesting again the big eyes i think is universal for everybody who picked today's pile we have a mum mumbai mumbai i hope i'm saying that right um hello to everybody in india we have january oh maybe they're a capricorn oh i love me a capricorn anyways january um we have big lips we have medium-sized lips we have light skin we have a triangle shaped face. We have a dating app. Again, I do think that for a lot of you who pick this pile, like most likely you're meeting them online. We've got rising, okay? Aries rising, Leo rising, Sagittarius rising, okay? It's very, very likely for those of you who pick this pile, this person has a fire rising sign. We have fall. And we have east. 
This could be the East Coast, the East of something, East. I want to get their eye color, you guys, because that's the one thing that's kind of bothering me. We have black hair. Okay, so perhaps this person has really, really dark hair, which makes sense. I feel like most people who have shown up in this have really dark hair. We have short hair, so short black hair for a lot of you. Can I please get an eye color? Please, can I get an eye color? Because the eye color is bothering me. I don't know why I want to see their eyes so bad. We have a heart-shaped face. Long hair. So again, there are some of you who are attracted to either you're attracted to women or you're attracted to men with longer hair, but we have short hair and we have long hair. I'm not getting an eye color, you guys. I am getting the big eyes. That was something that stood out to me in the beginning as well. And I think it's so interesting that the big eyes also came out in the notes. So that is what i have for you guys group number two thank you guys so very much for allowing me to read for you i really do appreciate it i'm sending you guys an abundance of love and that is all i have for you today so bye hello to my final group group number three if you guys are looking for a personal reading those are in the description box again the prices range from 30 dollars to 75 depending on how much time you want to purchase let's go ahead and roll the dice <laughs> We have Virgo and Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, you guys. We're focusing on the rising sign because obviously we're talking about what they look like. This could be you, this could also be this other person. Leo, Aquarius. Again, Sun, Moon, Rising, you guys, Leo, Aquarius. Aries and Taurus, all right, Aries, Taurus. Sun, Moon, Rising, okay. Let's go ahead, everybody, and start shuffling out some cards on what they look like. I knew the devil was going to come out for at least one pile today. I don't know why, but I was just like, I'm feeling the Capricorn energy. <sighs> Dang. You guys want to have babies with this person. Like, that's how attracted you are to this person. Like, you look at them and you were like, I want to have your freaking children. It's not just like, oh, he's so cute. Like, oh, she's so pretty. It's like, I want you to have my babies. If you don't want kids, obviously, like, you get what I'm saying. Like, don't be annoying. Like, you get what I'm saying. It's okay if you don't want to have kids. But, like, don't be annoying. Um, guys. <sighs> okay. I don't even know where to start. We have the devil. Okay, and I'm gonna start here first because this is like the heaviest card, the heaviest card. The devil is addiction, all right? Now, usually if we're talking about the devil in a reading, I'm like, oh, this isn't the greatest. This could be better, essentially. But when we're talking about somebody's physical appearance and the devil comes up and it's like addiction, obsession, feeling attached, this is telling me that you are extremely attracted and addicted to this person on a physical level okay now for some of you that's going to be great for others of you maybe not so much it obviously depends on the relationship but regardless like you're going to be extremely attracted to this person and not just again in a like oh he's so cute but in a like i literally want to have your babies type of way um and for some of you not literally but like you again get what i'm saying so that is the devil. This is also a bit darker. This is a bit darker and more serious type of energy. It's a very lustful energy. Um, the last pile and the pile prior, there wasn't this like heavy seduction, maybe a little bit in the first one, the second one for sure. This is heavy, heavy seduction. Okay. This is like, you cannot physically help, but to desire and crave and want this person. Okay. We have the Empress to start us out as well at the beginning of the lineup. The Empress is beautiful, okay? She's divine feminine energy. Now, feminine energy is all about desire. It's all about attracting and receiving, okay? So again, this is giving me almost a sensual energy. And regardless of if you're attracted to men or women, like men or women, you are going to look at this person in the in the perspective of like you are gorgeous you are so incredibly attractive because that's how the empress is described this is also talking about abundance you guys and creativity oh my god the whole baby thing i literally want to have the empress is usually depicted as like a pregnant woman so that's why i'm like oh the baby thing so some of you guys might literally be having children with this person this relationship may be a very serious relationship for some of you i don't think that's going to be the case for all of you but for some of you it very well could be that you are going to have children with this person 
Also, again, with this, I see this is a lot of physical attraction and also this person pouring a lot of money into their physical appearance. <laughs> we also have the nine of rings. This is luxury and abundance. So again, you guys, like the way that I'm seeing this, this person's pouring money into their physical appearance, whether that is through the means of like their clothing is expensive or they buy high quality brands. Maybe they're somebody who's constantly like pouring money into their diet or into their exercise regime. Maybe they're pouring money into their cologne. Maybe they're pouring money into their haircut. I, I don't know what they're pouring money into, but they're pouring money into their physical appearance, okay? Because that's what that looks like. And if they're not, then they just naturally look expensive. They just naturally look like a luxurious item. Now, I do think that this person is somebody who is very financially well off. And the reason I'm saying that is because we have the King of Rings. That could play a role in being physically attracted to this person. That's not gonna be for all of you because that's not the case for every person. Um, but I know that some people are attracted to like financial income or stability even, right? Um, or somebody's ambition or somebody's like work ethic. This person, I feel like, has a very good work ethic. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, again, there's a lot of cards here that are representing an energy of, like, work ethic um, and money. But there's also this feeling of, like, abundance and luxurious energy. And, again, somebody who's coming off in a very, like, bougie manner. The King of Pentacles is stable. He's consistent. He's reliable. He's responsible. But he's also an extreme hard worker. He's known as a wealthy man. Now, again, it's not necessarily that... For all of you, the money is like what is attracting you to this person, but the security, especially if you are a woman um, who's interested in men, then it's going to like this financially stable masculine energy is providing like security and a feeling of feeling safe. We have the two of wands as well. And the two of wands is talking about planning for the future. And I think this is actually the card, surprisingly enough, this is actually the card that made me go, oh, you want to have a baby with this person or you want to have a future with this person. Like you look at this person and you see your entire future, okay? That's what I'm seeing with the two of wands. Now we also have the fool here, you guys, okay? And the fool is talking about new beginnings. <sighs> I'm seeing this group number three as like you want to have a new beginning with this person. You want to start again a life with this person, but a whole new life different from what you've had previously. You don't want the life that you have been living. You don't want this relationship to be like previous relationships. You see this person in a different light and you want to move this relationship in a different direction. All right, that was very quick. Can I please have a message about what they look like? What do they look like? That's so interesting. What do they look like? There's again a lot. Okay. Mm. Interesting. I did not mean to get this much, but we have the sixth house of routine. So this person may have a really strong routine. This person may be somebody who is very committed to their daily habits and rituals. This may be playing a role in their physical appearance, such as going to the gym every morning or having a really strict diet or having a really abundant diet, right? Maybe this is someone who's a little thick or someone who's wanting to put on a lot of muscle so they need to eat a lot of food or they need to eat a lot of protein. Um, but it's like consciousness in regards to what we're doing to our body physically, okay, you guys? So it's not like um, accidental or non-intentional. Like this person looks the way that they look or they are working towards looking a certain way intentionally, okay? And again, that could go either way. I don't want anybody coming at me in the comments about whatever. Um, We've got the moon and we've got cancer. So again, guys... Oh, the moon is connected to cancer, which I think is interesting. Now, the moon's talking about our emotions. Obviously, I do think that emotionally you're attached to this person as well. I don't want you to think for a second that you are simply attracted to this person because of their money or because of their um, physical appearance. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. There is an emotional connection here as well. I think these other things are just a nice extra. I do think you want to have a family with this person. And again, for those of you who don't want a family, you are wanting to pretend like you're making a family with this person um a lot okay if you are under the age of 18 maybe you should skip out on this part of the reading or just this reading in general um because i feel like having children and like wanting to have a family with this person is really prevalent again for those of you who are on the younger side maybe you're over the age of 18 but for those of you who are on the younger side it's not to say that you're gonna have a family with this person right away but there's a desire 
Sagittarius, this person may come from a different country or cultural background than yourself. The reason I'm saying that is Sagittarius is all about expansion. This could also be talking about well, it's talking about expansion. Hold on, let me finish my thought. Talking about expansion, it's also connected to the ninth house. The ninth house is all about foreign travel and higher education. So you guys may be meeting this person in a foreign country while you are getting an education. Maybe you're just meeting this person in a foreign country, or maybe this person is coming from a different cultural background than yourself. And maybe you're meeting them in your home country, in your home city, in an educational type environment, okay? The main thing I'm getting with this though is again, different cultural backgrounds or hereditary backgrounds. I'm also getting an energy, you guys, of um, this person being somebody who's very expansive. That could go this way, that could also go this way. We have a Neptune here and this is sacrifice. I'm gonna tell you this and I, I honestly, like if it upsets you, I'm sorry, it just is what it is your love for this person is blinding you to the things that are ugly about them, okay? And that's beautiful. That is a beautiful thing. That is a blessing that you can love somebody so much and ignore the fact that they have crunchy te teeth. I was gonna say feet, but for some reason teeth came out. Have crunchy feet. Um, it's beautiful that you could love somebody so much that like them looking a little disheveled is like, oh, they're so cute. Like that's, that's the type of energy it's giving me. It's like loving this person despite things that may be unattractive about them. And it's not to say this person is not attractive, but it's to say that the things about them that are unattractive, your love for them trumps that. Your love for them blinds you to anything about them that is not attractive. So to you, to you, group number three, you look at this person and you go, they are a goddess. They are a god. There's nothing about them that I would change. They are perfect. And it's not literally that they're perfect. And the reason I know that is because this person is human. They're not literally perfect, but your perception of them, your physical attracted, your physical attraction towards them is that of perfection. We have the south node. This is life's debts, okay? Ooh something to let go of. There's something about their physical body that they may be too stuck on that they need to learn to let go of, or they may place too much of an importance on physical appearances. And that may be something that really wrecks them mentally or emotionally. This could also be talking though about this person. Um, again, I don't want to say they're not attractive because it's not necessarily that they are attractive, but when I see the South node and talk about life debts, it could be that they feel, um, displaced in regards to like oh well I'm not like you know I'm not the best looking this or I'm not the best looking that or I wish that I was taller or I wish that I was this I wish I was skinnier I wish I was thicker I wish I had bigger chichis I wish you know whatever life stats like feeling a little bit I don't want to say feeling jaded but it's when I'm when I'm thinking about debt and life's debt and like karma and things we need to let go of for some reason it's giving me a sense of like oh I wish I had this this and that but I have to learn to live with this and let go of the idea of like what I want or what I wish I looked like we have Aries as well this is aggression this is connected to Mars energy this is sometimes I see this as like physical athleticism them, but I see this very much as like somebody who <clears throat> physically you may look at this person again I think this has a lot to do with the fact that you are attracted to this person group number three but you look at this person and you go oh of course they're confident of course like they love themselves like you wouldn't guess that there are insecurities here we have the fire element of desire. So again, I do think that you guys are wanting to make a baby with this person like I think that's just literally what it is like you look at this person and you want to you want them to be unclothed. You want them to be disrobed. Okay. Can I please get a message for group? <sighs> okay. We have Jupiter again. Well, I guess not again for the first time because we have Sagittarius. Jupiter is talking about luck. It's also talking about expansion. Again, similar to Sagittarius, Sagittarius rules over Jupiter. Jupiter is talking about expansion. So when I see this, again, there's abundance here. This literally says abundance. I do think this person spends a lot of money on their physical appearance, whether it's like a gym membership, whether it's them <coughs> wearing nice clothes or having a nice cologne. They invest in quality when it comes to their physical appearance. This person may also be your husband. For those of you who are interested in men, this person may be your husband. We have the moon again. This is our emotions. And I think it's so freaking funny how it says perception because the moon's not necessarily about perception per se. It's about emotions, but your emotions and the way you experience things internally is how you perceive the world, right? Like nothing 
Like the way you perceive me obviously is different than the way like my friends and family perceive me because they know me on a deeper level. They have history with me. They know my good and my bad and my this and my that. So it's like your emotional, your internal world is how you perceive the world, right? Like you see the world through your own lens and that is literally what this is saying and that's what I was trying to communicate to you guys earlier. Your love for this person is what's making them attractive and it's not to say that they are ugly, it's not to say they're not attractive, but like to you, they are the most attractive. To you, you're like, I love you, I'm obsessed with you, you're perfect. And like they may literally just not be, you know, like I personally think that my partner is like perfect. I think that he is the most attractive person ever, but I think I can, I can recognize that I feel that way because I love him because I'm in love with him. You know, we have the eighth house of mystery. All right. The eighth house of mystery. You guys, again, this is death. This is giving me very much like the devil energy again. This is giving me erotic seduction. This is talking about, um, death and rebirth so there may be an element of death and rebirth playing a role in this person's self-image <clears throat> okay can i okay the cards are repeating okay there is a very masculine element to this person okay even if you're attracted to women and you're attracted to feminine energy, there's something very masculine about this person and their physical appearance. Um, that could even just be their jawline, you guys. Like, I think Angelina Jolie is one of the most beautiful women on planet Earth. Um, and I think she looks very, very feminine. But I do recognize that her jawline, right? I think it's very, it's strong, it's sharp. And not to say that, like, only men have sharp jawlines. But that is typically a more masculine feature. Even though, again, I think Angelina Jolie is one of the most feminine, gorgeous, beautiful women to have ever existed. Um, anyways moving forward we have neptune this is dream and transcend dream and transcend so again guys neptune energy is here your love for them is what's making them beautiful or making them perfect i shouldn't say it's what's making them beautiful because it's not to say they're ugly but again your love for them the way that you perceive them is causing you to have a little rose colored glasses which i think that's beautiful none of the other groups you guys i was necessarily getting like it's not to say that the other groups weren't falling in love, but this group, I know for 100% certainty, you are falling in love with this person. You wanna have a life with this person. We have earth. This is persistence, patience, and practicality. So there's a very grounded energy about this person's physical appearance, okay? There's something very down to earth, grounded, solid, firm, stable. And then there's something very masculine about them as well. We have yang energy. This is productivity, expression, doing, and forward motion. So you guys may perceive this person in a more masculine light. And again, that's not to say this person is not also feminine, but you may be attracted to the masculine qualities about this person, okay? Strength, the skeleton. This person may be very physically strong, okay? Ooh. one more please what do they look like skull of stars infinite possibilities they look like infinite possibilities you guys what is attractive about this person is the fact that like you love them okay and i do think that they have all of these qualities that we're talking about but i think the main thing that's standing out to me is just like you are in love with them you want to have a future with them you see a family with this person you see a life with this person and because of that you are almost like blinded by your love to what they physically look like for example if you were to ever fall out of love with this person i feel like you would look at them and you'd be like oh not that you're ugly but it's just like oh we have hearth and this is happiness in our hearts and homes. Okay, so again, like I think that you see a home with this person, you see a future with this person and that is playing a major role in them being physically attractive to you. Okay, I love that. Let's... Um... <laughs> Can I get one archetype card for this person? Okay, or two. 
We have the poet expresses soul insight in symbolic language, perhaps the way that this person sings or speaks. Maybe this person has a musical talent of some sort that you're very attracted to. We have the liberator as well. This is freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. Oh my God. I think that this person is helping you guys expand your understanding of love, your understanding of love and like what a relationship should be. I think that they are helping you expand your thoughts on that and your perception of what that is. Okay, final deck, you guys, and then I'm going to start pulling from the bowl. What do they look like? I love this for you guys. Can I just be so honest? I think this is the best group because what this is telling me is like you are going to be insanely attracted to this person regardless of what they look like, regardless of their physical attributes because of how much you love them, because of how serious and how deep you believe this relationship has the ability to go or to be. Um, we have the sixth house of craft. It says work, details, health, well-being, diet, service, daily rituals, contribution, organization, purification, skills, apprenticeship, and method. Again, this person's daily rituals and daily habits are playing a major role in their physical appearance. We have Queen Cux. This is complexity. It says irritates, puzzles, mystifies, complicates, contradicts, clashes, misses the mark, requires translation, adjusts, makes curious, educates, and transforms. I think that this person, like your attraction to this person is complex. It's not physical. I mean, it's not that it's not physical, but it's deeper than physicality. <sighs> And the last card is Venus, and this is love. It says beauty, harmony, romance, charm, receiving, sensuality, luxury, wealth, diplomacy, magnetism, value, pleasure, adornment, adoration, attraction, indulgence, taste, and style. Again, your love for them is what is making them so incredibly desirable to you. Your love for them is what's making you want to like just rip their um, clothing from their vessel. <laughs> Okay, can I please get a message for group number three about what their person looks like? We have tan skin curly hair, average body build. We have less hair. We have a square face. We have casually dressed, a standout smile. We have December. This could be their birthday, your birthday. Maybe you guys are meeting in December or you've already met this person. This is not showing up. I think this is ears that stand out. I think I have to throw that into the abyss. Perhaps this person has ears that are unique or standing out to them. We have long work hours, long work hours, a dream come true. That's the thing. I feel like there are some of you who are too, I don't want to say immature because that's not necessarily, there are some of you who are watching this who are not like you're hearing it and you're upset and you're like oh like she's not describing this person as attractive and again you're not if that is what you take from this reading that I'm not describing this person as attractive you're not listening or you're not hearing me in the way that like maybe come back and listen to this reading again at a time in which you are a bit more developed or at a time in which you have gained enough experience or knowledge or know-how before receiving this message because I just know that there are gonna be people who listen to this and then you're not 100% ready to receive it because this is not just like a physical love like this is deeper this is beyond anything that's just this is beyond anything that's flesh okay and I think that that is why this is so important for you to hear and again I just feel like there are some of you who are watching this who aren't necessarily ready to hear it we have H We have silver. We have thick hair. So for some of you, this person has like no hair and for others of you, this person has really thick hair. We have entrepreneur. We have tall. We have ghost. Intense. Reliable. 
We have Chile and the 31st. Okay. So again, you guys, I want to make it super clear. I'm not saying that this person's not attractive. Matter of fact, I think that you are going to feel um, more intimately ignited from this person than anyone you've ever felt ignited from before. Like you are going to want to be alone and in private time with this person a lot, like very, very often. But I just think that a large majority of that is because you're so madly in love with them. And again, it's not to say they're not attractive. It's just like to you, they are gorgeous. To you, they are perfection. But when we're talking about like a general scale of general attractiveness, I don't think that this person is somebody who is again, like I've been using Jacob Elordi a lot today. I don't think this person looks like Jacob Elordi. I don't think this person looks like Massimo from 365. I don't think this person looks like Megan Fox. I don't. But that's not to say that they're not attractive. And that's not to say that, again, for you personally, like you will think that they are like Jacob Elordi. You will be like, oh, I have me a Jacob Elordi look alike. And like, that's not the case, but I love that you feel that way. So, anyways, guys, that's what I have for you, group number three. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to read for you. I hope this was helpful. I'm sending you love, and that's all I got. So, bye.